Hi everyone, Hamish here for the Uplay team at Massive. Now, today I want to take you through something that's been requested from our previous videos. If you've been watching any of the ones that have been focused on streaming, we talked about how you can do cool transitions by pressing just a key on your stream deck, but we didn't show you how to make them. So today I'm going to show you how you can crack open After Effects and get a fancy transition all designed and rendered out. Let's go. Now to create your own transitions like we're going to do here, you will need to have access to After Effects, which will either require a subscription or that sort of thing, but Adobe do have a seven day free trial that you can get stuck into as well. So head over there, get that free trial and see if you can bust out same transitions in that seven day period. Now see if you like it, maybe this is something you want to do more of. We're going to keep things really simple today in After Effects. We're just going to do a simple wipe transition. I'm going to show you a few easy tips you can do to make things look fancy without a whole lot of effort. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll create a new composition at about, let's say two seconds in length. We want these things to be really quick because you don't want to actually spend much time noticing them. If your transitions are too long, people will get so used to looking at the transition that when it goes, they'll be like, oh, I'm kind of annoyed that I didn't get to see that for long enough. Anyway, keep your transitions short. Today, we're actually gonna do a division theme transition. One, because we work on the division here in the studio. And two, I kind of want to make something that we can share with you. So if you are streaming the division or the division two, you can use it on your stream and try it out a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a solid. You can do that by going layer, new solid, or you can hit control Y to get that happening. We're going to have this be division orange. Fun fact, that is 255 in the red, 106 in the green, and 19 in the blue. Now you know. All right, that's division orange. For all intents and purposes, we just want the solid to come on and leave again with a few frames of full coverage. So then we can use that frame to transition between the scenes in OBS. What I will do though, is I'll use the solid in a little bit of a different way. You will have noticed on the division logo that there is a slight angle on the letter D and that actually sits at around 16 degrees. So when we have that, what we can do is let's make sure that those are all covered. We can make sure that our wipe comes on at the angle that is reflected in our logo. So bonus. One of the other shortcuts that I like to use is control home as well. That's going to put that back in the middle. Okay. So we want this to, we'll hit P for position here. We want to make sure that it arrives in this position. So we'll set that keyframe, we'll head back in time and we'll move it off the screen. That's going to mean that this over those frames arrives here. And then what we want is we want this keyframe. So you can either copy and paste that, or you can just hit this one and it's going to duplicate or it's going to make a keyframe at that point. And then we will move it off. You'll also notice that mm, it kind of looks a little naff. The keyframes are just going zero to 100, 100 to zero. We could actually set these to easing keyframes. So for example, we could say, oh, let's ease this one in. That'll mean that it slows down as it gets closer to it. We actually need to space these out quite a bit. So, whoop. And then you could ease this one out. Whoa, whoa. Now you could use the easing inside of After Effects or you could do what I do, and it's kind of the easy get good button inside of After Effects, which is using a plugin called Ease and Wiz. Here's the cool thing. Ease and Wiz is completely free. I mean, it's a pay what you want system. So if you Google Ease and Wiz, you go to the website and you can pay as much as you want for a plugin that's gonna save you so much time and make everything look awesome. So here's what we'll do. We'll go into Ease and Wiz, we'll select all our keyframes and we will set these to in and out. So I'm just hitting zero to RAM preview this so I can see exactly what that speed kind of feels like. And I kind of like it. Now what we'll do, nice and easy, we will put a logo in the middle to add a little bit of visual interest. We also want the SHD logo to have a little bit of movement so it doesn't feel so static in those few frames. So what we will do, there's a couple of ways you could do it. You can make this a 3D layer and kind of zoom it in a little bit. Or I mean, the same thing is basically just scaling it. So let's set a keyframe for the scale of 100%. So we want it to be about here once that's off. And then we'll go back to where it's invisible and we'll just make it a little bit smaller. So you can see that over these frames, it's zooming in just a tiny bit. 
Okay, cool. Okay, so we're almost there, but how do we make that SHD logo not visible unless it's on top of the orange? Now, we're gonna do this thing right here. We're gonna duplicate the orange solid. So it has exactly the same keyframes as the one below, complete replica. We're gonna move it above the logo. Uh-uh. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit F4 and make sure that we have this track mat thing visible inside of After Effects. And we're gonna make sure that the alpha mat is used. Basically what that means is that you won't see, hang on, I'll just set this so you can actually see it. You won't see that logo until it's on the same pixels as that orange layer. So pretty cool. All right, one last thing before we render this out. We wanna add a little bit of sound to kind of sell the effect. We don't want this to be too loud because it's gonna be a bit obnoxious for our viewers if it is, but let's just add a couple of sound files that we have. So you can see here exactly how long these audio files are, which is cool. But to be a bit more precise, what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll this out and head down and open up the waveform. You can see how this waveform looks. And we kind of want this to start with the orange. So we wanna push this back. This little peak in the audio, we're gonna have it so it arrives here. There's a little bit of anticipation. And then the orange starts and you hear a bit of audio. And we'll do the same for the other one. Let's roll this out and get the waveform open. We will then have this play from here. Okay. I'm gonna take a little listen and see if I was at all correct. Okay, that works for me. I'm happy with that. We'll just lower these to minus 10. Now, this is the bit that trips up a few people. We wanna make sure that we get the transparency that we wanted this whole time. So we can toggle the transparency grid and make sure that we're all good here. Our intention is nice, fantastic. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do with the render. We're gonna use a codec that I mentioned earlier in one of our streaming videos called WebM. It's a kind of light codec that works really well with transparency. Previously, we would have had to use really high res and uncompressed MOVs and AVIs, but this is what you'll want to use for your types of transitions inside of OBS because your OBS is probably encoding a stream and we wanna make sure that everything that we can do to lighten that load is done. So. WebM, you can download that over on their website and make sure you have that installed before you try and render this out. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make sure that our whole timeline is available because if we have, if we're previewing just this segment, which we may have done while we were working, we don't want that while we render out. So make sure that we're at this part and this part that we have our whole timeline selected and available. And we also want to note where we have on which frame full coverage. So let's say it's here, we're on frame, let's just for ease of use, say frame 50, okay? So you can see that down here. Keep in mind that this isn't done in milliseconds or seconds, you have frames here and then seconds. So, because we're doing 60 frames a second for this, you'll see that's one second and 60 frames, we'll go back to 50. Perfect, we have full coverage. Remember that, because that's gonna come in really handy when we set up this transition in OBS. Okay, we'll head to File, Export, Media Encoder Q. And that's gonna open up another application that we'll be using to render this out. You can render straight from After Effects, but I like doing it like this. In a few seconds, it'll show up inside your queue and we'll have some things that we can change. So we'll head down to WebM into our format. I actually already have a preset, but let's go and have a look at that. We'll go ahead and give it a name. Let's say, TCTD, Tom Clancy's The Division 2, transition. Cool. Make sure that your width and height are set the way you want it, but if in doubt, just match source because we should have already been working the way that we wanted. We'll use the VP9 version of the codec and we'll use constant quality. We don't want to use a variable bit rate, we're gonna use constant. Now you have a slider here. I mean, 60, especially for something that doesn't have that many colors like ours, we have two, white and orange. We can probably leave that where it is. And you can see right now our estimated file size is five meg, pretty cool. We could bump that up to 100, 13 meg, or down further if we wanted you know, one meg. But I think we're gonna go around 60. 
We give, I mean, we could do 100, but let's just, for argument's sake, use 60. We use two-pass encoding, regular sampling, regular bit depth, and here's the kicker. We want to make sure that we include the alpha channel. That's going to be really, really important. We'll use maximum render quality, and then we will just hit OK, and we'll render this out. Just got to wait, like, a minute. All right, now we're open OBS, we're gonna add this as a new transition. Right now, we have to use fade and that sort of thing to transition between pig one and pig two. I mean, it's pretty cool, but we're gonna add a new stinger and this is what our transition is going to be. So we'll browse and we'll grab our transition and here's what we wanna make sure that we get right. Remember that frame I said earlier? It was frame 50. Actually, for an example, let's just leave that at zero and then we'll come back. So now we have our stinger and our scene transition, we'll hit Pig one, and it'll happen. But you'll notice what happened is it transitioned at frame zero, and our transition hadn't actually started yet. So, like that. That's not what you want. That's gonna look really dumb. So we'll go back into the settings, and we'll hit frame 50, which we know is completely covered, and then we will keep the transition there. So it's not going to do it until frame 50. Perfect. It works. But what if, for example, you don't want it to be on absolutely every scene? That's probably going to be a bit much. Maybe you just want it between your gameplay and your webcam, or your webcam and your gameplay. Well, what you can do is you can use per scene transitions. So what we'll do, let's just head back to fade. And so we're fading between these two. But let's say I want to go to pig two using a fade, just my default one. But every time I go to pig one, I want it to use the transition. What we're going to do is we're going to go to transition override, and we're going to go to our stinger. So I go to pig two, we're using fade. I go to pig one, boom. That's exactly what we want. Every time we go to pig one, we're gonna use our fancy transition. All right, hopefully you learned something today and you can make your own transitions inside of After Effects and get them into OBS. If you're a little bit scared to jump into that After Effects side of things, you could always grab some from other online marketplaces. An interesting one to look at is something like videohive.net. You can get something maybe a little bit more ambitious than this. But if you do wanna use this transition for your division streams, you can head over to discord.gg slash ngon and we'll make sure that you can download it from over there. Pretty easy, right? If you do have any more questions or things we'd like to cover in upcoming videos, maybe some more tutorial type stuff. This was kind of fun. Let us know in the comments below and we'll make sure that we can hook that up as soon as we can. All right, see you next time. Bye.